Good day. This is Brad Kayla, PhD, and my PhD stands for Post Hole Digger. You know by now that we continue to dig on the proper foundation of our Lord. I tell you, my God is an awesome God, but I do like to share a few things with you. Tough times never last, but tough people do. As you know by now, we have some very serious, corrupted things going on in today's world. True lies and leadership. What difference does it make? And what the heck? This is something that somebody else shared with us. This was Hillary Clinton. What difference does it make? Is the country under distress? I use the flag upside down because I believe this is a serious, serious pandemic. But the pandemic is only a cover of what's really happening today. Let's check this out, folks. Talking about true lies and leadership. We're not talking about President Trump, who only lies when he wakes up and goes to bed. But we're talking about the lies of a society that we as a society have undergone for so long that we are basically, we don't really care anymore. At least that shows what we see at the polls. The majority of people come to the understanding that they claim when they are voting, A, they are either Christian, B, they are Muslim, C, they are Buddhist or some kind of a religion. The majority of Christianity that is supporting a president that continues to do certain things contrary to the norm is under question at the moment. Is the church based on a flawed foundation? If I have one person making a mistake or two people making a mistake or three people making a mistake, I can understand that maybe we have a little problem. But if millions and millions and millions of people are brainwashed, then I must come to a different conclusion. Somewhere, somehow, our ears must be wrong. We must be suffering of something called ticklish ears. And you know, the Bible talks about this in uh, Revelations, but also in the New Testament, that the group of people that claims to be followers of Jeshua, HaMashiach, that they are suffering of ticklish ears. So I checked it out. It is true. Ticklish ears is a disease. You have to go to a doctor and he washes out the props, the, the garbage, the boogers, you know, the stuff that sits here and the stuff that comes here and the stuff that you don't want to talk about, the stuff that you just want to shoot, but you can't do it because it's not nice to do that. Now, that is what I'm talking about. Yes, folks, when you're on the farm, you talk about it as manure, shit. That's the stuff, okay? So now we are clear. We know what we're talking about. Garbage is in your ear. Now, how did that garbage come there? Now, you can say, well, it wasn't my fault. There's always somebody else to blame. So let's go back to the foundations. Remember, my post hole digger degree means I am continuously digging on that foundation. I want to find out what is the real foundation. An archaeologist, you can call me also. So what is the massive failure that we see in the public right now? Truth is not for lazy people. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, to him I will give the hidden manna. What in the world are we talking about? Is this something that I have dreamt of? No. In Revelations 2, verse 17, the complete Jewish Bible, those with ears, let them hear what the Spirit is saying to the Messianic communities. Uh-oh. Messianic communities doesn't sound very biblical. Uh, what is that? To him winning the victory, I will give some of the hidden mana. I will also give them 
and white stone and which, on which is written a new name. Nobody knows except the one receiving it. So we have two options here. We are hearing something. If we hear, if we pick it up, if we listen very carefully with those ears, and we listen to the spirits, maybe what I'm saying is also spirit driven to the messianic communities, to him who wants the victory. He will give us hidden mana, hidden knowledge, hidden understanding. Now, where in the world does that come from? That's not exactly what we are being taught in the church, is it? Now, I am talking to the body of Christ. When I say body, I mean the body, the system, you know, that works as an as an example, it is not a literally like me, cheeks, hair, you know, arms, and etc. I am talking about a system called the body of Christ, which is essentially the church. Now, the church wasn't the way it was today. When Jesua started, they followed the way, the truth, and the light. Now, the truth is something that is extremely annoying. Because when it is true, you cannot go around it. You have to deal with it. So in other words, when the Roman Empire was looking to get something done the way he wanted it, he changed the church. And the Gentile church that had not yet so much experience showed themselves to be orthodox. That was just the option. Okay, folks, we call you Orthodox. We make you a church. As a matter of fact, the emperor of Rome will support you. So why did they couple themselves to the Jews of the Old Testament? The big question was, in those days of Jesua, Jesua really reamed it out to the believers at those, in those days. The priests, the high priests, the guys that are teaching the simple people, and they said, you know, you are from the devil. And what does the devil do? Ha! He thinks, you know what? I'll turn it around. So the Roman emperor gave them a legitimacy by telling them that the Jews were forerunners of the new Roman Catholic Church. But, there was one but, you have to declare that you are a Christian, a Roman Catholic Church. That one is the way we call it now. The way, gone. We call it the way, no, we call it Roman Catholic Church. And all you have to say is Jesus, and you are a Christian. Doesn't that sound familiar? Just follow me. Say after me, I, and then whatever your name is. Forgive me, Lord, for I have sinned, and Jesus, help me. And then with those wonderful songs, they sound so great. They sound so believing, but we are in a major problem, folks. What is the major problem? Are we doing it the way God wants us to do it? Or are we doing it the way the Roman Empire wants us to do it? See, the Roman Catholic Church needed a new identity with a false and counterfeit disguise of authenticity. They used replacement theology. This masquerade, you know what a mask is? You put something on and somebody can't see who you are. I do it a little bit different here. Let's take this on. They put this on and so they said, now you can't see my eyes, ha, 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 ha. Just like a little child. The Roman Catholic Church need, needed a new identity with a false and counterfeit disguise of authenticity. They use replacement theology. I repeat it just to make sure you hear what I say I mean. This masquerade became the downfall of Christianity. The gospel account of Yeshua correctly portrays the Jews as the devil's offspring when they pose the question, why don't you understand what I am saying. This is Jesua, Jesus talking to the people that are listening. Because you cannot bear to listen 
to my methods as to why the Jews could not understand spiritual teachings and concepts. Yeshua explained in verse 44, he said, you, you, priest, you belong to your father, Satan, and want to carry out your father's desires. From the start, <clears throat> he was a murderer. And he has never stood up by the truth because there is no truth in him. When he tells a lie, he's speaking because he is a liar, the inventor of lies. John 8, verse 43 to 44 in the complete Jewish Bible. Friends, if you are a follower of the body of Christ, or you are part of the body of Christ, or you consider yourself a Christian, if you believe you know Yeshua or Jesus or understand the scriptures, they will confront you with the fact they buried and kept from you by evil political forces ruling the church. If you are reluctant to read or to listen what I'm sharing with you, do not discover this and think about what we examine herein. You will meet head on these identical facts and realities when you get to the hereafter. In other words, when you die, you will have to deal with it. Either you deal with it now while you're alive and can think, or you wait till you pass on, you die, you croak, you want to call it whatever you want to call it. And that is what follows, is an answer to the countless prayers for greater truth and understanding of the scriptures. So if you have been praying with your heart, Lord, give me wisdom, direct me, guide me, because you come to understand that it's not just, oh, please, 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 Jesus, I accept you, but it is following the way the truth and the light. I am digging down here in my heart. My heart is changing. It's no longer stone. It becomes malleable, manageable. It becomes part of what God can say. Well done, you good and faithful servant. You must yourself listen and pay attention. And you have to struggle along the way. Folks, there's nothing wrong with struggling, fighting, understanding what God means, having problems in your heart on the, because you're upset, because things are not going the way they're supposed to be. There's truth in the kingdom. God will teach you. His spirit will open your eyes. He will guide you. But you know, you cannot serve two masters. You cannot support a human-made or mankind-made system of beliefs by the carnal man of this world. In other words, the religions formed under people that claim, and they basically want control over you, this is how you ought to believe, otherwise we kick you out because you won't get into heaven. I've been excommunicated three times, folks. I do know a little bit about wondering and asking questions. I'm 70 today. This is in 2020. I was born in 1950. For those that want to check out, 1950 to 2000 is 50 years. In 2000, I got some serious challenges. And that made me think that for 20 years, I've been trying to figure out what in the world happened to us. How is this possible? And it finally came to me. And I finally started to understand Reality is not what they tell you. Reality is following the word of God, allowing God to open your eyes. Suppose like you have a car. I love cars. I've had many cars. And uh, I tell you, a car is a wonderful vehicle. But when you live in Canada, it's not just a wonderful vehicle. It's a must. I used to drive between 75, 125,000 kilometers a year for 35 years, folks. A car was a necessity. So let's take that car. It's a motor vehicle. And you take all the wheels off. Now, what happens? Can I still drive from Toronto to Vancouver? Folks, I won't even make it. You can still run the car. I mean, the engine. You turn on the key and, yeah, it works. Ha! Listen to the radio. Can you hear that beautiful sound? You can sleep in it even if you want to. Out of necessity, I've slept in my car a couple of times. It wasn't fun. But imagine, you want to go some places. 
but you would still remain stationary. Why? Because your wheels are taken off. You are spinning your wheels because they have to stand on something, but the tires are no longer there. So it is impossible to move. So you render your car incapable of fulfilling the very purpose they manufactured the vehicle for. In other words, the car is not moving. It's making a lot of noise. It's praising the Lord. It's glorifying the Lord. Listen to the music of Jimmy Reeves. Listen to the music of blah, 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 whoever you have today that supposedly leads you into the worship and praise of God. Am I making light of it? No, folks. It is good to praise the Lord. But please, if you turn on the music, make sure that the wheels are there to bring you where you ought to go. The wheels enable you to complete the journey. By removing the wheels, you render the vehicle worthless. Now, some of the people say, well, it has some vir virtual value. Yeah, but what does a car do for you if the tires are not on it? I don't care how much you pay, four, five, six hundred thousand dollars for a car. Wonderful. So you are a rich dude. You can afford to have a car like that, but reality says you cannot move because there are no tires. And by removing those wheels, this is the foundation of your belief. You now miss the journey. The soul's journey from the alpha of our ignorance, in other words, the alpha and the omega. Jesus says, I am the alpha and I'm the omega. The alpha is where I start as a little baby. And now I'm growing. I'm getting my brains together. I'm learning and understanding and discerning. And finally, I get the picture. I got to be patient on top of it. That is where my level of understanding start to grow, wherein my soul brings the wholeness to manifest completion and perfection. Folks, life goes in stages. Your spiritual life is in stages. But if it is controlled by just do this and just do that, and we will tell you whether you're right or wrong, folks, that is what the true church, the church of Rome, did to the gospel. They basically took out the purpose, the real essence of the teachings of the gospel. It's also true that if you possess the eyes to see that you will understand how the instructions on the pre-existent soul remains tightly intertwined within the framework of the existing gospels. Like the gospel of God is for real. But we got to learn to see and understand it with our spiritual eye. And that spiritual eye, folks, can only be taught from your inside. God Almighty will speak to you. His spirit will speak. The eye sees only what the mind is prepared to comprehend. One of the genuine examples of this fact is we see where the English translation of the scripture says, repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Matthew 3, verse 2. This is very deep for some people. Change your mind. Open your mind. Have a paradigm shift. In other words, change. I'm on the river right now. Just to let you know, this is where you let go, folks. Let me check something out for a moment. Remember, the brain, it's totally shattered. If the pieces are not falling into place, then your brain is like this here. Let's go and check this out here so you can see for yourself. Is your brain scattered right now? Are you not understanding what I'm talking about? Is it too much for you? And please, just do a simple thing what I did. Lord, I'm so screwed up. I don't understand this. Open my eyes. Help me. God will help you. And yes, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus, has set an example. He said, I am the way. So do what Jesus did. Do what he did. He sought the Father. He was looking for the Father. He was looking for the Spirit of God 
to teach them. Open your eyes, folks. This is Brad Caleb, PhD. And my post, my PhD stands for Post Hole Digger. What does that mean? I am working on the foundation of the prodigal son and daughter. Folks, we all need an hand. We all need some help. There's nothing wrong with that. But please remember, tough times never last. But tough people do. God bless you. Bye for now.